What's going on, everybody? We are in for a treat today. Our guest is down in Miami, Willie Rodriguez. Welcome to the program, my man. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here with you, sitting on the other side, and just let's go have some fun today. Yeah, you are a fellow entrepreneur and podcaster, and so yes. let's start first with your business because it's unique from the other guests that I've interviewed on my show. Tell okay. us a little bit about your business. So my business, basically, we have a 65-acre nursery is where it's at today. Uh, I started it off in 2010 with a mission to to grow and succeed like everyone does when they first start out, and we have thrived to the point and reinvested most of the earnings throughout time, and here we are 11 years later with 65 acres growing. We started a podcast. We're doing more media things and just trying to keep it spicy and continue growing throughout, you know, regardless of what's going on in the world, we are thriving out here trying to keep it keep it going. Yeah, I watch a lot of Instagram and it seems like there's some just stunningly beautiful landscapes in the Metro Miami area. Oh yeah, definitely all through all through Florida from let's say we service let's say Tampa Orlando down heavy uh, on a heavy scale. Oh, wow. Yeah, we service all those all those cities and there is some amazing projects that we've been able to be a part of from little houses, little projects to massive, you know, thousand apartment communities, you know that we go out there and we Basically, we we gather up all of what they need. So the landscaper, they contact us with a what I call a wish list in today's world because, you know, not everything's available. So we basically go out and we use what we have if we have it and it's up to the spec that they need. But we go out and that's a whole other sector that we created. Go out and locate what they need and deliver it right to them. So if, Take you're, in Mi if you're in Miami and you have 65 acres there, Tampa, that seems far away from Miami. How do you get the plants to Tampa? How does that all? So uh, we have an in-house logistics, basically like um, it's another stream that we created uh, to pump out our product to our clients. And I have to rely on someone else to come through. And that started off with one old top kick box truck, 1994. And it's gone up to now we have a big fleet. We have semis, 40 foot gooseneck open wow. trailers. And and a bunch of 26 foot box trucks. So we're stocked up and ready to pump out basically anything we can service up to like 10 full deliveries in one day, uh, which is a lot of product. <laughs> we're, we're talking, um, you know, a lot of product, 10,000 plants a day, 12,000 plants a day. We can, we can pump out of here. And deliver so you have anywhere. relationships with your customers who are landscape contractors in, in Tampa and, and that area. And they contact you and say, Hey, Willie, I need X, Y, and Z. And, and you get it to them. Yes, because we're the wholesaler, so everyone's looking for the best price. And we're also in South Florida, which is the hub for, you know, nurseries. There's thousands of nurseries out here. So we have everything at our expense. And so they're getting the best bang for their buck, and they're getting eyes on their product. So it's different than, you know, just making phone calls and going based off whatever people tell you over the phone, and then you placing an order with them and having a third party pick up your route, right, of whatever you ordered around town. You get a company that puts their name on it. We have buyers on board. They go out, look at the product, pull the product, tag the product. And then we go pick it up ourselves and we go put it in the trucks, um, you know, accordingly to the shipping days and stuff like that. And we get it right to you. We're at job site sometime at five in the morning. <laughs> Amen. That's you awesome. Know? And that, those are things we can do doing it ourselves. So. We can get back to the origin story in a moment, but where are you at now? How many employees are on? I know you mentioned 65 acres. That's humongous. What's the day in and day out operation of A's Ornamental look like today in 2 2 2022? So um, we're, we're a little bit over 50 employees, and that changes. Some guys, you know, hang out for a couple of weeks because they, you know, that's how things are. And we have our ride or dies that have been with us since day one. But uh, basically, you know, everyone, we have a crew manager outside that takes care of like the groups and what they're doing. We give that person lists of what they need to propagate for the day. And if they're missing soil or missing anything like that, we place the orders. And uh, when it comes to loading up product, every group has a, let's say, manager mm -hmm. that uh, they go out and they grab the stuff that's needed for the deliveries. And we go take it all to one site. And on there is where we stage everything. And then the buyers start at seven in the morning. And they go out with their lists that they've had for maybe a day or a week. And we just finish gathering up those items that we need. We text pictures to the clients. If they ask for photos, we try to meet spec. And then we gather up everything, load it up in the trucks and go. But it's a crazy, it's a lot of stuff that we do out here. It's a lot wow. that goes into it. Now, why do you deliver? Why doesn't the landscaper come and pick it up from y'all? So we have landscapers that come pick up uh, all day, day in and day out, but there's a lot of landscapers that don't have the time. 
and uh, what it costs nowadays just to jump in a truck and fire it up. Uh, it's, it's a lot better to have someone just take care of the whole thing. You know, we're in a service sector business, uh, just like you, you know, you guys landscaping out there. So you want to come through for the client as much as you can and getting them away from having to do anything with gathering up their product and getting it to them is something that has worked since day one, since I started it. And I just saw, you know, that, that, that is something that people want. They don't want to have to deal with it. The less stress they have, because we all have stress in our lives, the better it is for them. So that's why we incorporated that. And uh, also, too, you know, you, you're getting these orders with you're doing a complex and they're doing it by pieces and we're sending them 4,500 plants in a semi. Not wow. everyone has a semi trailer, you know, wow. not everyone has a semi trailer and not everyone has the manpower, let's say, to to do that. So that's where we come in and we take care of it. Well, all they got to worry about is unloading it. What's your inventory? I was watching your Instagram story yesterday with a bunch of the plants, but what else do you guys carry and what are kind of your, your specialties? So we specialize in like ornamentals, um, shrubs. We do a lot of hedge material that's very popular down here. And we also do a lot of palm trees. We do crotons. We do small grasses like mondo grasses. Yeah. Um, we do a bunch of different things. Green Island is a big popular one. I basically like to grow what moves. Uh, stuff I can find elsewhere cheaper because there are people that is the mom and pops, it's husband and wife, and they cultivate their own stuff. I can go get that at a cheaper price point than it would cost me to even produce it. So at that point is when you tie in and you make connections with them and you say, hey, next year I'm going to do 40000 Can you grow me 15000 Yes, I can do 15000 a year. All right, what, what are the seasons? This, this, this. All right, I'll have it done. Perfect. And now, you know, basically like, growing contracts and we do a lot of that stuff as well just because we can't produce it all here and even if we tried to produce it all here it wouldn't be at the size it needs to be at specific times because i can get a phone call today for some that's not ready that i have but i can go source it okay so you've been in small business now for 11 years in, in a yes. market and i'm just intrigued by this because like i said most interviews i do are with landscape professionals or lawn care business owners or, and so we're on, we're on the other side of the spectrum. We're the ones buying the product from folks yes. like yourself. But I know a lot of the business um, principles cross over the industries. What have you learned in these 11 years, Willie, um, about business and about building a profitable business and kind of finding your niche and, and really serving the customer well? What, what would you say it, it's taken you the 11 years that now you're like, man, I really am in the groove in this, this particular part of my business? That is an awesome question. Um, I have learned so much, just like we all do every single day. Um, but uh, we, we basically, it's, it's you want to grow to a certain aspect, right? Or you want to become uh, as large as you can be in a, in a manner that you can continue to, to control it. And uh, that's something from day one, you know, reinvest um, your name, who are you? Your word, of, you know, your your whatever comes out of your mouth, you have to come through with mm -hmm. and really taking care of the customers and putting your money where your mouth is when it comes to you. You see the vision, you see where you want to go and what are you going to do to get there? What uh, avenues are you going to take to get there? And what what are what are the things, some of the things you're going to leave on the back burner for later on in life, like having fun or buying things that, let's say, don't make sense or produce money. Uh, and it goes back to that, like, let's go buy another truck. Let's go buy two trucks. Let's go buy a semi. Let's go get a separate trailer or two separate trailers so we can load those while the other ones are up north. Um, and it's just perfecting your craft, perfecting it, uh, bringing on more team members. That's a huge part because you can't do it alone. You can have the best vision in the world, but if you can't make it happen, then it ain't going to happen for you. Uh, the team members are a big, big, huge part. That's why we brought on more staff um, in higher higher areas just with knowledge of down south and what's available and what's not. We can get back to the clients faster. Someone calls us or they send us a text or looking for something. I can usually have a photo, even if it's not our product grown here within 20, 30 minutes and wow. uh, have someone put their eyes on it. You know, that, that really is, is something huge. I've learned so much and I'm continuing to learn now with all this media stuff and uh, you know, growing what is the, the entrepreneurship road, right? That now we've built up enough stamina, let's say, to start a uh, industry-based podcast, uh, more dedicated to just the outdoors, um, and and me having that business mindset and have gone through so many things, 
in my life to be able to feel confident enough to do it, right? Just like you, I'm sure day one. Well, I know you come from a radio background. Uh, so you have some experience in this. <laughs> I have no experience in it, but I'm hungry and eager. Yeah, well, I appreciate you guys have a really high quality audio sound because I started seeing you guys on, on Instagram and just looking at, and a lot of these guys, their equipment's raggedy, their 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 audio's raggedy, it just gets on my nerves. So yeah. when I saw y'all, I was like, man, you guys have a really good sound. I'm, I'm not talking about just the content of, of what you're saying. Um, but I'm talking about the actual yeah, the quality. Audio, yeah. yeah. The audio quality. If you don't have good audio quality, you lost me. I don't care if you give the most cutting edge, you know, business advice. If it sounds raggedy, I can't listen to it. And so yeah, it's you guys started, um, with a really good quality sound and, uh, I'm really excited for you. What's the name of your podcast and, and it's, the social stuff? It's the plant movement podcast. I the like plant it. Movement. Yeah. The plant movement podcast and what are kind of your topics that you discuss and, and unpack on the plant movement podcast we we talk about a bunch of different things um mostly it's it's tying it's it's building let's say like a network like what you have here um just bringing people to light giving them the opportunity to tell their story um there's so many people out here trying to figure it out and that's what i want to give back i want to i want our guests to come on and tell their story of how they started and how they got to where they are today, because it's very impactful. And as the episodes go on, you know, people feel even more comfortable coming on and opening up and telling us the real nitty gritty, you know, because everyone, it's nice to see someone that's doing 10 million a year, 20 million a year, but how did they get there? Right. So when you get to interview these type of people and you get to pick inside their brain and ask them any question you want, it really does open up people's mindsets and lets them know that this stuff is possible. And also at the same time, we're networking what they do to the world. So they have more opportunity. And um, that's basically what it is. And sometimes I do jump on. I talk about credit. I talk about business uh, things as well, things that I did to get to where I am today. And it's basically just giving back a huge networking tool, like, you know, and um, more opportunity, more growth. Me, when I was, you know, I was doing the nursery, um, I love it. Right. I love what I do. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, but I wanted more. Right. And not, you know, I didn't just want to be the nursery guy. You know, I wanted to be a little bit more and give back some of this knowledge that I've acquired over time. And this is something that I would talk to people generally every single day about all these different topics. And now we're just putting it together in a nice, uh, format that it sounds good, the audio's good, the quality, the video's good. You know, we invested money into it and because I saw a future in it. And we have seen an immense amount of, you know, opportunity that has been created. Like I'm sitting here with you today uh, from it. And that's why you cannot leave those awesome ideas that one has on the back burner. You have to pull the trigger and go. We're in 2022, <laughs> you know, so we have to go. We can't we can't stop and we got to continue. And that's what we do every day. We innovate, we push the boundaries and we're making connections and just having fun along the way. That's the most important part. Yeah. And you said something earlier, Willie, you said you want to share the wisdom that you've acquired with others. Mm -hmm. What would say is a couple of the key pieces of wisdom that you have acquired in, in building your business um, that you'd like to share with my audience? Some of the key things that I've acquired, Ooh, we can we could do a whole another podcast just on this question. <laughs> um, like I said, from day one, your word is bond. If you if you say one thing and don't come through, it's game over. There's you know if if you tell someone, hey, I'm gonna call you back in ten minutes, you better call them back in ten minutes uh, because you don't know who that person is. You don't know what they're expecting from you. Um, the word is a big thing. If you go and get into something, like, let's say that I'm sure some landscapers can pertain to this. You go, you have a big project coming up and you, you upfront 10 grand to a supplier, hold the product for 30 days and give me 30 days to pick it up. All right. No problem. 30 days, 60 days goes by 90 days. That guy closed his door with you. He'll never do that again. Right. So it's things like that that are implemented here. Um, another thing that's huge is reinvest as much as you can. The first five to 10 years are crucial. They're mm -hmm. crucial in creating a successful business. Like we all see people that are superior to us and we're like, man, how did they get there? They weren't, 
making 50 grand going out and buying a Ferrari, right? Or going on a lavish vacation. They were making 50 grand struggling and they probably put back 35 grand of that and they lived in, in the basement, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and those are things that I still to this day implement heavy on a daily basis. Take home this much, even though I made this much and let's okay. continue growing and, and build, you know, something with it. Uh, money's a tool to me. Um, so you can put it back to work or you can, you know, spend it on something that maybe your money's there, maybe it's not. But in the business world, you want to reinvest as much as possible. That's how you climb the ladder the fastest. And that's what I've realized over time with everything that I've done. Always put back and always strive for more, let's say. Yeah. And I think that advice, Willie, is, is countercultural to our Instagram highlight reel. Um, maybe it's been four or five years I've been noticing that entrepreneurship and small business is like cool. Like it's, yeah, uh, it's a cool thing going through Instagram. It's like, Oh, you know, people post these and I'm sure in Miami, you know, you guys are like known as the exotic car capital. Yes. Of the world and the whatnot. boats and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The boats up in uh, Fort Lauderdale, man, then we got some boats up in there. And yeah, um, you, yeah. so, yeah, you guys got the, the, the cars and the boats and all that. And that stuff's great, man. I'm, yeah. You got the money and you can have a <laughs> car boat. Like, come on somebody. Yeah, it's awesome. But, yeah. Yeah. The point though is, um, folks like getting in that sucked into that lifestyle and, and the actual health of the business is, is neglected or, you know, you really brought up a good point. Like, Hey, live simple and build your business. And then one day you can enjoy the fruit of your labor. But I think a lot of folks, you know, I just kind of watch and I'm like, Ooh, you know, like settle down. Yeah, like, We all, we all do that. But like, like, look for me, my head, let's say back, back, back when, Mm -hmm. Um, I started off with five acres and I'm like, all right, to acquire another five acres is going to cost me about 250,000. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do? Am I going to go out? What do I want? I'm getting the phone calls, the demand to go and do my own product, make a 60, 70% markup on it to then pay my bills with. And I'm getting the phone calls for the demand. Do I go and set up another five acres or do I go out and I don't know, let's go do something and blow some money. No, it was all right. I need 200. I can start it with a hundred. So that, that was my goal. All right, let's go save a hundred. We got the hundred. All right, let's go get the spot. All right, we got the spot. All right, now let's dump this hundred and I'll go continue making more money throughout that time period, which is let's say three months to set it up and fill it up. And I can finish the 200 by time you know, it's all said and done. And now I got 200 invested. So now that I got 200 invested in that spot, that's not me purchasing a property. That is me renting a property. Okay. Now it'll take me, let's say three flips of that property to get my money back. And for the rest of my life, that property will make money on that 200 that I invested that I already got back and I have it put somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That'll make me money for the rest of my life. All I got to do is maintain it. And then at about 24 years old is when I started acquiring properties, like actually spending money and buying stuff, like putting 80 here down on a property and, and uh, buying something instead of just renting. Not everything I, all my properties today are bought. Most of them are rented, like half and half. Uh -huh. but, um, but that's hard to do, especially here in Miami with prices now. It, it's, it's, it's tough. Wow. Yeah. But, um, but that's really, that's just, let's say a glimpse. So it's like, and that's how basically I went doing it all the way up to 65 acres and acquiring property, you know, throughout the way, which property to me in our industry is, it's amazing what you could do with it. You can go invest. Let's say you're going to buy a property. I'll just throw out a number. Let's say it's a million dollars. You got to put 20 down. So 20% is 200,000. You're $200,000 in, let's say you're 300 or 400 to set it up. Um, you now have a property that'll build equity, right? So you put your money in that investment and it builds equity. Now you can take out the equity, fill up the property with it, or go start something else with it. And the property makes money every single day. So <laughs> those are those are very good tools to have. You know, you can get credit lines with real estate. You know, everybody wants real estate. Every Any banker, any lender will lend you money with an asset, whether being paid for or whether you have equity on the property and get up to, I think it's 75%. So those are all things that I learned. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. I can invest my money here and it'll always generate money. It'll give me back money. I still have the asset. <laughs> you know, this is powerful. You know, now how, how many um, locations does your nursery have? Nine locations. We have where, nine locations. Down where are those located at? They're all in the Redlands. They're all, they're all off Chrome Avenue 
which if you know what Chrome Avenue is, you know where it's at. And they're all scattered. Uh, they're the furthest one, let's say, from the other furthest ones, about a 25 minute drive. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's the bad part of let's say looking back now. I don't have any regrets, but I wouldn't have been able to do it any any other way. Okay. So like now it's like, man, if land was to go cheaper again, I should buy, like I would love to buy 50 acres in one location. Then maybe I don't have to worry about the rents going up. I don't got to worry about that. And now I have my own spot. But to do that down here is crazy. It's like 10 mil. You need 2 million down and then you need like another two, you need like another Woo! two or three to fill it up. So you're like 5 million out of the hole. But yeah. Is that something I could acquire one day? Yes. Why? Because I have properties that I purchased that they're worth a lot more than what I paid for. They're paid off. Let's say most of them are. So that's something that now, if I wanted to, if the opportunity presented itself that, hey, it's five, it's 10 million for the property, but now the economy, let's say drop, real estate drop, I can pick it up for five or I can pick it up for six. Now I can actually do that. Right. And having these assets, that's why it's so important to have something that people want and something you cannot duplicate, which is properties. Um, like I said, anyone will loan you money on it. So you have the asset. I still have the asset. I'm still producing on it every single day. And I extracted funds from it to go jump into this new thing. And that's what when you realize that and you start to live it and becomes a reality. That's when the game really changes. And, um, you know, for me, it really opened my eyes when I learned that. And I've had so many experiences in life, um, being an entrepreneur, doing this. Obviously, there's goods and bads every single day. You deal with a bunch of stuff. You have a million things going on. But you just have to learn how that it's a process. It takes time. Nothing's built over day, over, over, overnight. Mm -hmm. And if you stick with it, you will manifest whatever it is that you're manifesting. And that's, that's a big part of it. I see a lot of new businesses that have been created, especially like lawn care, all that stuff out here. Um, that they jumped in while we were on the rocket ship going up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you guys that have just started a couple of years back, you need to understand that what we're living today is not normal. You were, you jumped on the train while it was doing a hundred miles an hour. The train will slow down back to 50, right? <laughs> right? So when that happens, are you prepared for it? That's why I'm like my podcast. I talk a lot about 50%. Pretend that tomorrow your your business was to drop 50% in sales. Are you ready for it? The, the loans that you have on the trucks, the lawn equipment, all that stuff, or whatever it is that you're dabbling in, can you afford those things, right? If things slow down, will you need those things, right? Um, you know, the nice fancy truck down here, everyone has a $100,000 truck. It's very easy to have a $100,000 truck. But is that something you need? Do you need that? Or should you go get a dump truck and a bucket truck with a hundred grand and drive, you know, a regular F-150 for 15? Should you do that? You know, what, what makes more sense? And now it's like, hey, we've had a, an amazing run. It's been amazing. But I see that that is very close. I feel like it's very close, right? Um and inventory out here is a big, big, huge yeah, thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Inventory out here is ridiculous. Um there's there so we've had we've had 2021 was a rocket ship of a year so now what was available is completely gone so now we're all on waiting lists to get pots soil fertilizer right labor's hard to come by rents are going up for people that rent their properties so and you tie that all into what's out now now you have the grower that is now dipping more into the profits from the last crops to go and do these new crops and there's nothing up to size, right? Mm. So like we're always scattering, trying to find stuff that's a little bit taller than what other people have. That way I have some type of leverage. So I'll go and right. I'll, that's a whole nother thing, going and buying up product, buying up blocks of product to have. That is a, uh, that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother topic. But um, when you look at what we're dealing with in the supply chain stuff, and, you know, we're dealing with something that's alive. So, you know, you're waiting for, you order liners that take six months to get here, but you needed to have them finished in six months. Mm -hmm. So now you're six months behind. Like right now, spring. So we have the heavy hitters out here. We have Costa Farms. We have Pure Beauty. We have Nature's Way. These are all big boys that sell to your Home Depot's garden, uh, the garden centers at Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, True Value, wherever plants are sold around the country. These mm -hmm. are the guys that take it up there. And just to about last week, all their packing decks were empty. 
So it's, it's springtime and you have empty packing decks and these people pump out like 30 semis a day, some mm -hmm. probably more. And you're like, man, this is, this is fun. What, what's going on? You know? And I drive around here, all the product is small, you know? So it's, it puts the landscapers in a huge bind. The landscapers are the, you guys take the hardest hits on everything because you're dealing with the, the, the person that purchased it all. You're the artist creating whatever it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And those are things that, you know, people have to be prepared for. Like I talk about have a clause at the bottom of your invoice and letting your customer know that prices might change a little bit, not on everything, but there might be two items that you can't find that now you got to go up North and go get it at a retail garden center or go to home Depot and buy it. And what you were paying five bucks for now it's 20 and you mm -hmm. need, you know, a hundred of them. So these are all little things that, um, that, that make a huge impact for, let's say them. And for us down here, we're just duking it out. Now what I see is everyone is stocked up with product, but they don't have any sales. So that's like a huge thing for, let's say, just a nursery owner that grows product. They invested more money to make this new block, the new batch to fill up their nursery. So they have all this money invested, but nothing to sell because nothing's ready. So <laughs> that put them in a huge bind, which is why we implemented, you know, gathering up everyone's order it keeps us busy no matter if our products up to size or not we're still moving everybody's moving everybody's getting paid we're still making um some type of money to continue going and that's what we're going to do write it out now how do you guys grow your product to make your product how does that work so we start some stuff i start with liners some stuff i do cuttings myself we propagate in our greenhouses okay um but basically like to kickstart it faster, let's say we get liners or I'll, sometimes I go out and buy gallons or I'll buy even seven gallon stuff to bump up at 45s if I don't have it. And that's what it is. Start off with a small, small item. The mm -hmm. smaller it is, the more money, it, uh, the less money it costs you, which is more money in your pocket, let's say. But now you're dealing with time. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it all it all varies. We do like 80 different varieties here and we do large scale. So we'll do everything from gallon up to let's say 45 gallons. Some stuff is more the three gallons and the seven gallons, but we'll do big numbers. Um, but that's basically what it is. Have your contacts to get your liners, the seeds. If you're doing seed from, let's say, Porta Carpus, we do the seeds. So we'll get the seeds brought in from Japan or from China is where they come from. That's where they mass produce those plants over there and cultivate the seeds. And uh, we go from there. But let's say a liner, like I was showing somebody today, uh, put a carpus in a gallon and they're only like five inches tall. She's like, when will that be six feet? I was oh, probably three years, you know? So it's that alone has taught me so much patience being in this industry and how yeah. things work and that things are alive and they take time. There are some stuff you can do to make things bloom faster or more, and you can make stuff grow faster by doing root enhancers and things like that. But for the most part, it's a waiting game. And that's why sometimes when you do the bigger items, it's easier to go and buy something that's more established and step that up. You're going to have more money in it, let's say, if you didn't have it on your own, but you get the finished product faster. That's fantastic. Tell us a little bit more about your um, podcast and, and how people can connect with you, Willie. And, and uh, I know you're just a wealth of knowledge and have such a unique <laughs> perspective of this industry. But for my, folks listening right now from lawn care business owners, landscaping business owners, I think you can add a lot of value to other entrepreneurs. So Thank let you. people know what they can do to, to learn from you and, and everything you got going on with your media uh, endeavors. Yes, thank you. So we started it like five months ago. You can go right on Instagram. Um, it is the Plant Movement Podcast on Instagram. You can also jump on A's Ornamental Nursery on Instagram. We also have YouTube channels for both of them. Same name, Plant Movement Podcast and A's Ornamental Nursery. And, um, and that's what you can do. And it's just another avenue from a different perspective because I love you guys. I love listening to all you guys. There's like four of the landscape podcasters that that I know about and um, you being who are, who are those? Well, I know Ottman is one of them, and Archie, there's another, yeah, um, yeah, uh, there's contractor. A, yes, there's a couple of them, and I don't listen to let's say everything because I'm busy, I'm right, I'm trying to create my own stuff, let's say, but I do take time and listen to certain ones. I've listened to a bunch of yours, yours I've listened to most of out of out of anyone else. Uh, just because you said the quality, the way you speak, it's very it's, it's very graspy, right? Um, you're doing a great job <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, but basically you guys, you can go on those platforms. You can check out what we're doing. If you wanted to jump on, you're more than welcome. You can shoot us a DM through Instagram 
And you, you can hit us up on email as well. It's uh, media at azornamental.com. And what's the other one? Media. Willie at the plant movement podcast.com. Plant movement. Network. We got a million of them. The best way is IG. Just jump on Instagram, shoot us the DM. That way I can see who you are. I can see what you're doing. And it just, it's, it's, I love Instagram, man. Look, that's how we connected. Yeah. And that's why I've connected did, with so many people. How did you get connected with my boy Paul down there, PGL, Miami Lance? So that that story is crazy, man. So um, when I was when I was thinking and brainstorming on what I was gonna do, let's say media wise, because mm -hmm. that's a whole that's a whole other story. Um, I was like, man, we can do YouTube and we can do this because there's nothing that's nursery based with business. Yeah, there's a couple videos out there, but they're back from 2018 and no one did anything else. I want to go hard on something. So I was like, oh, let's do this. And maybe podcast is one of them. I jumped into on Spotify and I searched different things. You came up. And when, when you came up, um, I, I, I was skimming through it and I saw the Miami landscaper and I was like, man, who's oh, this wow. guy? So I look, I look him you up. Found and I him saw on my podcast? Well, yes, I technically, I did find them on your podcast. That's cool. But then when I reached out to him, he's like, hey, what's up, Willie? He knew who I was. So we had talked on the phone a couple okay. of times. And he had bought product for me, but I didn't remember oh, cool. that. So he okay. was already an existing customer, but I don't see everyone that walks in the doors. So I didn't know exactly who he was. I didn't put a face to who he was. But, um, but that's how I met Paul. And from there, you know, he's jumped on our podcast a couple of times. He loves yeah. to speak. He loves to give back. So it's something that, you know, we, we, we have to get that energy while we have it and make something with it and le and give it out to the world to see. But, um, but the podcast was something amazing that my, my partner in crime, uh, Eddie Gonzalez, he's the producer here and he's the guy that does all the beautified stuff on the media. Cause I, I don't know how to do none of that. He tell Eddie, I'm very impressed. He does it. He said, you're job. very impressed. Yes. He said, very thank good you. Job, Eddie. No, Eddie, Eddie's killing it. And we brainstorm together every single day like if if you partner up with somebody um in anything you want to have someone that is as hungry as you right or hungrier but mm -hmm. that let's say knows how to execute a different division of what you're trying to do so mm -hmm. for us to to power up you know get together and build something we we're doing it and what you guys see if you go online and you check us out it's only been five six months it's only been five six months but we're hungry and we're eager and you know I love to invest, so why not invest into this? And this is, you know, advertising on a heavy scale, network on a heavy scale. I can talk to people like I'm talking to you today and an opportunity also to give back in an immense way to the youth and the green industry, something that the youth is, you know, they're not intrigued with this stuff. Let's say unless they have an uncle or they have a teacher, or they have a parent that's in it, you know, and they have some type of background in it, but it's a beautiful industry to be in. What you guys do is just amazing. All guests that you have on, all the opportunities that you've been able to accomplish in your life by doing this and actually going out, you know better than anybody. Um, it's just awesome. So you guys got to jump in the green industry and you can become somebody. You can become, you can make a hundred grand a year. You can become a millionaire. You can do oh, it for yeah. 20, 30 years. You could be worth 50 mil and, you, and then you cash out and you enjoy life. Right. Well, you enjoy yeah. life throughout the whole time. <laughs> but yeah, I, I know many millionaires, multimillionaires. They're in their fifties and you know low sixties that have been in this industry before Instagram and all the glamour. Yes. I mean, these guys don't even know. There's I have one friend who's a, a very wealthy. Has been in the industry. He don't even have an Instagram. He just he's yeah. in a whole a lot of a lot of guys I, age uh -huh. bracket. But my point is, from this industry, it's just year after year after year and, and being profitable and, and doing the deal, and, and you can become very wealthy. Um, doing the right things over time in this industry. And so it's really exciting for me, Willie, is, is these uh, young kids are 18, 19, 20, 21. I just interviewed a guy, um, Jack from Virginia. He's already, his business is already a million dollar a year business. He just started a couple wow. years ago. And he he wow. knows his numbers and he's on point. And I'm like, dude, you're 21 or 22 years old. I'm like, this guy is, when I was 21 or 22, I was a, uh, I had issues, man. I was, yeah, I was yeah. not on point in life like some of these guys are. So I just want to encourage you, Willie, what you're doing. It's it's changing the whole generation after us that that they can build a, a solid business, a solid foundation to their business and, and get out and give them a plan to execute. Because for me, at least, I had to learn all, everything basically on my own from failure. 
Yeah, no, we, um, let's say all of us, we all tie in together. We're all part of the movement, right? We're all part of it. What you guys do, what you do, what all these different podcasters do, people that do media, stuff that we do. And it, that's what it is, helping others learn things that they don't have to, you know, fail at or do the wrong thing to learn it. And we're giving them something to to feed off of, you know, and and, and they see like you are a huge inspiration. Um, you know, they see, let's say me or what we're doing and it inspires them. People say, oh, man, I'm copying what you're doing. Copy all you want, man. You know, yeah. and and we're we're tying people together, connecting people. People say, "Hey, who can I? Who can you recommend to do this? Recommend this person right here. This is the guy." You know, and giving them also limelight. You know, people love being on a podcast. It, it gives them that moment to shine, that moment to to talk about what they do and get out there. Right? There's not another place that you can do that. And also, one thing I wanted to mention is that for me and what I've seen on my side of things, which we supply landscapers, garden centers, and people that broker product and flip it. And we also do that nationwide, by the way. I cannot sell to Texas, Arizona, or California because I'm not certified yet for it. But regardless okay. of where you are, you need a truckload of product, we'll get it to you. Okay. Um, is that maybe 2%? That's what I would say. 2% of, let's say, nurseries and people like that are actually on Instagram. Let's say from from my world and my perspective, mm -hmm. there's so many people, you know, all my clients, people that walk in, hey, you're on, you're on Instagram? No, man, I don't do that, man. My wife, my wife won't let me, man. <laughs> you know, because oh, they, you know, they, whatever it is. So it's like, it's like, man, get with the times, man. Get with the times. I was completely against it. I had grown my business to, you know, multi millions, mm -hmm. and I was against all that. I was like, man, I don't need that. Look where I've gotten without it. I don't need it. But then I spoke to a specific person. And they opened my eyes on it. And I was like, wow. And then that from there has just been full throttle, figuring out what I'm going to do, who who do I got to hire, who do I got to team up with, and how are we going to execute it. And it'll be whatever it'll be as time goes on. But, you know, we're moving and we're having fun doing it, which is the most, you know, the best part. You got to love what you do. You have to. If you don't love what you do, it'll be a drag. If you didn't like interviewing people, you would drag having to sit here and listen to me. You know, so you got to love what you do, Paul. Yeah, well, I love what I do, man. This is, I think, episode <laughs> 700 of the I know, man. podcast. And I'm just warming up because I get to I know. like yourself. And we have a saying around here that iron sharpens iron. And so you talk to somebody else who's enthusiastic, passionate. They got that juice. They got that yes. pep in the step. And it just, it just, it gets you. It's it gets the energy, the man. It's the yeah, energy. It gets the, the, um, the staleness or it kind of gets the dust off of you and gets you going and get you thinking. And uh, I love it. So I'm, I'm Thank just you. warming up. I think the next set, hopefully the next 700 episodes are at a whole nother level and, yes. and even more doors open and, and, and a lot of people yeah. go ahead. No, no, go, go. I was just going to say, it, it, there's a satisfaction of helping other people. Um, it's so rewarding when someone reaches out and says, Hey, you know, I raised my prices finally because you encouraged me to do that. And now I'm making this much more money or whatever the piece yeah, of whatever advice it is. you listen to. I, I got my numbers in order. I hired a good accountant and bookkeeper, whatever it is. Um, and you know, in your case, you gave out a really excellent piece of advice, Willie. Don't, don't go live high on the hog in the early stages of your business. Live simple and reinvest in growing your business. Like who else, where else are you going to hear that in this culture? Like that's, that's sound wisdom that's going to help someone have a long-term success, but, but that's not a popular message. It's no, it's not popular a popular message, message but go get the stuff and show it off on Instagram. Yeah. That, that, that's what the trend is. Right. But you never want to jump in a trend. If something's going up, even like in stocks or Ethereum or whatever, Ethereum, or what was it, Dogecoin? Everybody's buying Dogecoin, Dogecoin, Dogecoin. That was a big thing. And then it sank, right? Not a sank, but it took a tank down. So you never jump in or you never do what everyone else is doing. And some people, you got to see what you're trying to build, right? Some people want to build a business to have the lavish things. That's what they like. And there's nothing wrong with it, but that's what they do it for. Me, I'm doing it for long term. Me, I'm doing it for generational. Uh, me, I'm doing it to not worry, to go if I, if I need, you know, I need to fill up my semi and it's $500. Who cares? We got the 500 bucks. You know, the tranny blows up and, oh, okay, let's, let's junk the truck and go buy another one. Let's go do it. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about it. That's why it's so important at a young age to have your credit right, to have your money right, to have your mindset right, to have a vision of what you want to get to and what 
you want to achieve and spend every day working on those things, um, you know, and oh, having a business is not for everybody. There's so much that goes into it. We're like, yeah, man, I want to have my own thing. I want to work for myself. And it's like, yeah, you're not working for yourself at all, dude. You're working for all your employees. You're working for everyone that falls under your umbrella. You're working for all your customers. Now you have a hundred bosses or a thousand right. bosses. So, right. and then there's so much that goes into it and you have to continue to be creative. You got to love what you do. You got to keep innovating because if not, you'll get stagnant. And, um, that's what it is. It's not cut out for everybody, but for the people that are up for the challenge, if you're going to spend your time building something, do it right. You know, just hold off, hold off on spending on things that don't make money. If it makes money, then go. If it doesn't make money, then, then, you know, cut corners. Not, not saying don't buy those things. I have, I love cars. I'm a car collector, but mm -hmm. I buy them, you know, I buy stuff that let's say hit rock bottom. And that, that has a value to it that I can park my money there. Enjoy it. Right. I can go, pop pop the clutch and and do a burnout or whatever i feel like doing right i can have fun or lift up a truck or whatever but the money's still there right the money's still there not saying to not go have fun you got to have fun but you got to be realistic and you got to remember that you have a goal in mind and every dollar you take out of that you know work cycle will not will no longer produce for you and it'll slow you down to get to where you're trying to go those are those are really that's really what it is <laughs> Well, I really appreciate uh, your time, Willie, and uh, thanks for reaching out. And uh, you guys who are listening, go check out the Plant Movement Podcast and uh, take a listen to that. Follow them up on the Instagram, A's Ornamental um, on Instagram, and yes, uh, tell sir. Eddie to keep up the excellent work. I, I appreciate folks in our industry who put a, a good presentation, a good aesthetics, a, a quality um, to you know the visual and the audio. You guys are definitely doing it. Um, Thank you. And, and elevating this industry. So thanks for taking time out of your crazy busy schedule. <laughs> and uh, we'll stay in touch, man. And, and hopefully this won't be the last time you're on the program. Hopefully we'll bring you back in the future with some, thank you, some Paul. updates, man. Well, I just want to say thank you so much, man. It's it's unrealistic that just, you know, four, five, six months ago, I found out who you were. And I said yesterday, man, I'm going to call Paul right now. I'm going to leave my voicemail. And boom. And I shot you the DM. How'd you get and my phone number? I got it right on IG. Right oh, on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, I got it right on Instagram, went to contact, boom. I was like, hey, I'm going to call him right now, do or die. No, no, it goes straight to voicemail. So I left your voicemail and we shot you the, the, the DM, you know, letting you know that we sent you something. And that's what it is, really going out. And thank you so much, man. It's been an honor. Um, if any of you guys need product, if you're in Florida, you can reach out to us. You can jump on our IG pages, on our IG pages, and you can see what we do. You want to listen to the podcast, we're on all the podcast streams. Whatever you need from us, we're a call away. Thank you, Paul. God bless you, man. And keep doing what you're doing because you are innovating on a massive scale for the industry. The industry needs more of Paul's. That's why I'm a former Paul Willie. <laughs> and we need more of the innovation, more of the products, more of the everything, and bring the youth into this and help them create a, a massive business and opportunity for everyone that falls under their umbrella. So thank you, Paul, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, Willie. Thank you, man. God bless you.